we're gonna talk about photography specific to social media. My name is Taylor Hudson Sneed. I am the owner of Tailored Social and Saturday Studio. I'm joined here today with a couple of my friends and I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. I am uh, Carly Hensley. I've been with the uh, company Fusion, the fast casual sushi restaurant um, for about 10 years. I'm the director of operations and I also help with all of our marketing. So um, uh, <laughs> Taylor and I have worked with the whole Fusion team on uh, branding and photos lately. So if you check out our feed, you'll see a lot of Taylor's work, but thanks. <laughs> Offrichter Creative, a uh, social media and content agency. Um, and I have, what, two years? Three years. Three years in business now. Um, very much so focused on food and beverage, uh, as well as local retail companies. Alrighty, I am Brandy Perrin. I'm the general manager at Salar Restaurant and Lounge in the Oregon District. Um, I've been the GM for about two years, and that whole time I've worked with Abby on our social media, on promoting our event spaces, um, the different kinds of events that we offer, so she kind of does it all for us. So today we're going to be covering, like I said, photography specific to social media, but also how to prepare what the best editing and best practices are, and also share a live demo with you today. I forgot to go to this slide. <laughs> so things to ask yourself before you get started are, do you know your brand color, vision, your overall guidelines? These are gonna be really important when, before you're even shooting to make sure that the photos align with what your overall brand is. Yeah, um, and then the second one is to look at a few of the tools you need to get started. Uh, we'll touch a little more on this later. If you are someone who's hiring, maybe a photographer such as myself or Taylor, what that looks like coordinating with us um, from the perspective of GMs. But if you're shooting yourself to, you know, looking at things like props and backdrops and the food and the product itself and just really making sure you have all of that set up before you need the photos done and ready to post or use on a website or anything like that. The next thing you should ask is what you're gonna do after you actually take the photos. Do you have a game plan laid out? Where are they going? How are you exporting? Will you upload them to a planning feed before you share them on social media? Just have an overall plan for the next step so that way you don't just have photos sitting in a folder forever that you're never gonna use because that happens way more often than you'd think. <laughs> My next piece of advice would be to actually schedule your shoot, even if you're not working with a photographer, dedicating specific time to capture your content and making sure it's a goal of yours as a company is gonna be really important. I have many entrepreneurs that I work with who say, you know, I've tried to do my own product photos, but by trying to do their own product photos, they mean they worked a whole day as an entrepreneur, maybe even at another job, and then at the end of the day, they try to take some photos and they just like grab a blank sheet of paper and try to get a white background. But dedicating specific time to this new endeavor and really trying to market your products is gonna be really important so that way you're bringing the best quality you can. Yeah, and to add on to that, um, and sort of transitioning to our, our next slide here, the more you try and plan ahead and schedule, the better you you know, are gonna incorporate this into your overall marketing strategy, looking ahead at what kind of holidays are coming up, what kind of features you may or may not be running, you know, industry trends, things like that. Um, and all of that kind of goes right into gathering those tools and creating a shot list and knowing, you know, what do I need for the next month and a half? Um, you know, you're gonna run into instances where you can't shoot photos maybe for one, two, three months ahead of time, but a lot of the times you can. Uh, so it just takes a little bit of planning and saves you a lot of work in the end. For example, I know some of uh, us are already or trying to like catch up with everything from the summer, but Black Friday is right around the corner. You already have to start <laughs> considering what you're going to be doing for these promotional sales. Um, I mean, I know Fusion has a whole marketing calendar where they have to plan months ahead for new product drops, new um, items they're bringing onto the menu. So just making sure that you're thinking ahead and having promo before your calendar says you have to promote this product tomorrow and you don't have a photo for it. And I would even hop in and say, like, we are planning our winter menu right now, and we have the recipes lined up for that. Um, 
next is the photo shoot, and then in that photo shoot for the winter menu, I'm thinking which of these photos will have copy in like an email setting and which are we gonna use on social media. So um, we try to capture all of those photos at once, um, which saves us from having two separate shoots. Um, we can just use all those photos for everything that we would need. Absolutely, um, we'll touch again on bat shooting here in a little bit, but to, to that too, Different needs that you have, different aspects of your business might also require different kinds of, you know, photo skills and photo assets. Something that Brandy and I have been working on um, is new photos of their space, you know, for rentals, for parties. And I, you know, by trade, am a food photographer and a portrait photographer. And um, while I have experience with, you know, retail, my equipment doesn't always speak to that. And knowing ahead of time so you can rent lenses or maybe look at a you know one time hire for a different photographer so you can really play up all of your strengths and get the best out of the money you're investing into photos or the time you're investing into photos again it saves you in the long run and it's gonna you know it's gonna bounce back the better you make those faces look the more people want to book them and rent them so it's worth the the two extra days of planning and the lens rental or, or whatever it's going to look like with that planning note in mind, you should also have a shot list ready to capture or with a list of everything you want to capture during your shoot. So that way you can make sure you're um, getting all the items you possibly need gathered and making sure that you have lots of explicit detail if somebody else that you're working with um, is photographing. So before I plan a shoot, I almost always create a mood board of what either I want the photo shoot to look like or what my client should expect from me as far as the overall theme. This can look like, you know, a little bit more old school with ripping out some newspaper and uh, magazines and creating like a vision board. Or, you know, what I do for almost every client now is uh, create a Pinterest board that I can share with them and that they can add to. So uh, a week or so before, a couple weeks before, I'll send it over and be like, is there anything in this that you absolutely hate that I'm not getting right? <laughs> and then we can uh, establish that before we even shoot so that way we're both on the same page. And then nowadays you can even save collections on Instagram from photos that you see in your feed that uh, inspire you. And it's always great to look back during your actual shoot too because you might have like a lapse of creativity during your shoot and then you can quickly go back to different poses, different styling techniques back on your Pinterest board. Absolutely, I think Taylor really covered all the all my bases for the most part, especially that Instagram save. Um, if you're someone who is you know, scrolling a lot or, or doing a lot of research and you know you're gonna hire someone or attempt to do it on your own, use that. It's really helpful to see what people like uh, and how they envision their products looking because we all have different visions. Um, and you know, if you're the creator of this or the owner and you're you know, working with a chef or a bartender or whatever it is to make these products, we wanna know what you envision. Um, I will add too, if, you, you know, if you're not at the point that you have your branding solidified, um, something I always do is I look to the space, especially when it's food and beverage related. So if we're talking about a restaurant or bar, uh, first thing I do when I meet with a client is I look around and I look at the colors they've chosen for decorations and the, you know, the way they plate their food. And then we usually go from there as far as color schemes. So that's always a really good place to start if you're not you know, feeling like you know exactly what you want. All right, so um, if, you know, well, if Brandy has anything to say, I'm gonna let her jump in, but one of the reasons I really wanted to invite her to join us was, um, so coordinating a product shoot, from my perspective, with food and beverage especially, goes a long way in getting really successful shots. Um, everything from, you know, knowing that the staff knows you're coming and you're not disrupting service, which is a, a real part of food and beverage, right, to knowing that Everybody's on the same page with how this dish is supposed to look and the timing. Um, both food and drinks, you know, they don't last forever. So if everything is ready at four, but the photographer is still setting up, all of a sudden you've got a bunch of dead plates on your hands and we've wasted X many more dishes and X many more time. Um, and a lot of the times from the perspective of someone who's maybe hiring a photographer, usually time, more time equals more money. Um, so Brandy and I, I think over our experience getting to know each other have, I think, done a good job at this. I don't know if you have anything to add from a perspective of a general manager. Yeah, I mean, it's, it would be super important for you to check in with whoever you're coordinating with to make sure that they've checked kind of down line <laughs> to one, you know, make sure that they've given their staff a heads up because, you know, like Abby said, 
maybe the person who is not as experienced in plating the certain dish is not working that day or you know just something r really weird that you know you may not think of as someone who doesn't work in the restaurant but you know, we have we were coordinating a brunch shoot the other day, and I was like, well, we close for brunch at 2, and we reopen for dinner at 4, but I know in those two hours that they're all prepping for dinner, so we had to find that, like, sweet spot of time. Um, so there's a lot of back-end business in the restaurant that wouldn't allow to, that wouldn't allow time for a photo shoot. Um, and then the same thing with, you know, like our cocktails. You know, we have to make sure that the garnishes are prepped. There's just all of the little details that, happen in the restaurant that someone who is coming in to take photographs maybe wouldn't necessarily think of. There's a lot of prep <laughs> on our end. So not only coordinating the schedule, but coordinating the prep, which is, you know, for, for us, coordinating with my bar manager, coordinating with our sous chef, making sure we have everything. So there's a lot, there's a lot more um, that, you know, maybe you know, putting it out there for you, you could remind your client of like, hey, have you checked with this person? Are we good to go? You know, check in the day before or something because I know Abby <laughs> has learned that I'm pretty notorious about, oh, this is happening tomorrow. Like, let me check with everyone and make sure that they're here and on time and know that it's happening. So, you know, that's definitely something that you could bring to the table as a helpful, <laughs> as a helpful tip to your client, you know, just make sure that you remind them something as simple as that. <laughs> I'll jump into and just kind of say, we we use a shot list to kind of um, map out then what prep needs to happen. So if I know I want to shoot winter menu, then the day before I'm prepping the the raw materials for that, get there the morning of and kind of start styling the food. Um, and we're lucky to have a, a two or three person marketing team right now. So we can have someone in the back, um, you know, actually making sushi, someone in the front styling it, and then also, you know, Taylor and the photographer working hand in hand. So it's kind of nice to, to have help on, the, on these days for us. It's really important to use your whole team. So when you're getting started, there's a couple things you need to prepare for, and those are like gathering your materials. Um, like Carly said, making sure your team is aware and bringing them all in. Um, testing some of the lighting, making sure you know what kind of styling you're doing for that day, and just have overall preparation. That shot list and mood boards will certainly help. Now we're gonna review some of our just best practices when it comes to actually shooting. Um, the first of all, like I said, gathering the materials. It's not just the materials that you're gonna be shooting, but making sure you have the equipment that you're gonna shoot with. And I know not all of us are shooting with like the professional DSLR cameras or anything like that. It can be having your iPhone, having a piece of uh, poster board that's white to bounce light off of, um, having just some staples that you shoot with on a regular basis, sometimes having a tripod uh, to make sure you're getting the same angle if you want a more uniform look, things like that. Uh, yeah, I'll echo Taylor um, and maybe segue us into lighting. I would say, especially if you're just starting out, um, if you're managing all of your stuff on your own and taking pictures, even with an iPhone, the best investment you can make is a piece of white poster board. You will be amazed. You put that thing, you know, I used to, um, if I was, you know, on the go and I didn't want to lug my lighting kit around, I would just pick one up at CVS and just rest it on my knees because it'll bounce so much light back and everything will be really well lit and all those details will shine. So, you know, if you can spare, I think, 58 cents to $1.20 at, uh, at Walgreens or CVS, it's one of the best tools that you'll get. Um, and then on lighting, you know, you'll see, so both Taylor and I really like to shoot in natural light. We have that in common. Um, but we're, we're used to experiences where we're not. So you'll see she brought, you know, a reflector and some things just to, to show what that might look like. Um, I have my, my flash on here. You know, I'll use an on or an off camera flash if it's necessary. Um, I have lighting kits. I don't like to bring them around. I, I won't lie to you, they're, they're bulky. You know, nobody wants to walk down a city street with a giant lighting kit. Uh, so when in doubt, we like to look for things like open, you know, windows and, you know, rooms with maybe multiple sets of windows and also light walls. Um, and if you're gonna do anything like flash or bouncing, you know, look for the space in your business that has you know, just a more airy feel because all that light's going to reflect and it's going to reflect on your food. So lighting, just kind of take a look ahead of time. And before you think that you need to go out and grab a professional camera and all this equipment, um, before I had a studio or a camera, I would shoot in my garage to have that overhead light flooding in or on my porch 
or just in crazy positions around windows throughout my house. Um, and also just shooting with my iPhone. So work with what you have first, especially as small businesses, entrepreneurs, we don't always have the resources right away that we need to. Um, and you don't have to go hire a photographer right away either. Although I think there's a lot of value in hiring a professional photographer, but um, just work with what you have first before you're overwhelmed with costs and all of that. Work on your business, pour love into that first. Um, and then moving on to styling best practices. Uh, the product should be in the center where the focus is. Sometimes you can do a little bit alternative shots and uh, change the angle a little bit, making sure that you highlight best quality products. Carly will tell you, we've had some, you know, sometimes she'll take a photo and be like, this watermelon radish is not as moist as I want it to be. <laughs> so uh, making sure that the products that you're shooting are high quality, um, they're showing your best face. It doesn't have to be, you know, your best selling product because maybe you want to shine some light on some other products that uh, haven't been making a ton of sales, making sure you're highlighting those too, but just showing uh, the high quality of your goods. And, and this goes for non-food and beverage too, you know, if you're here tuning in, any kind of product, you know, as, as simple as uh, I, I walked in and was listening to the last session, but like things like, you know, are your labels straight? And the reality is sometimes when we're starting out and especially if we're doing it in-house, sometimes labels aren't straight or maybe the printer started to, you know, give out. But, you know, just noticing that kind of stuff so that then when it is, you know, translated on to social media or a website or a brochure, you know, all of that still reads the same. So just give everything a quick double check. Um, so I, I put some examples, speaking of best practices, um, of some of my, you know, not favorite shots versus same product in a better position. Um, so you can look at the angle. Uh, Taylor and I laughed. She said, I like both. <laughs> I'm picky. Um, you know, the first one isn't my favorite shot of Solar's. Um, ravioli, I just, you know, I don't think you get as much of the depth or really understanding how the dish presents, whereas, you know, when you shoot that maybe top down or closer up, it, it presents a lot differently. Um, backdrop, you know, that first, if you look in the corner there, it's all the same cocktail, but it, you know, it just kind of looks like a circle. It kind of competes with what's around it, whereas if you give it a little depth and show the glass and just change your angle, it really makes it pop a little more. Um, and then keeping in mind things like actions and props. You know, you might want somebody on hand to even just hand model or, you know, hold something or move something so it just brings a little life to your photos. And, you know, you might, again, like Taylor said, start where you are. So maybe props and people in your photos comes later. But you might look back one day and say, wow, things got a lot better when I added just a, you know, a little bit of life to them. So now we're going to move on to the live demo portion of today's session. Uh, we're going to highlight, uh, let me just let this dish that from Fusion, we shot with this exact replica board surface setup. And like I said, before I had my studio, I would go into my garage. Last night, the lighting wasn't working for Carly and I inside of the restaurant. So we propped out uh, outside, out front, and just had all the natural light flooding in. Uh, golden hour, that definitely helped. And then worked a little bit testing the angles and uh, going from there. So. Carly, if you want to come down here with me, and sure. we can do some of the styling and show how we would do it Absolutely. at a normal shoot. Uh, like Abby said, we're both natural light photographers. So in this setting, we uh, would definitely use a flash, but just to show you just the basic setup of what we do. Yep. And I think um, for this photo, we were trying to highlight the spicy mayo. We really wanted, um, we just made the spicy mayo at Fusion gluten-free uh, this week. So that's kind of the goal for us was to highlight that. Um, I just have here a, a tuna poke bowl, which is a pretty common menu item for us at Fusion. And um, this shot, I'm actively saucing it in that shot. So I'll just pour some spicy mayo on and you guys will see the exact replica of what we did for this photo. On, on Fusion's front porch on Brown Street. Yeah. <laughs> So the reason we had this set up is because they have some of this black material that looks pretty much like their tables in some of their restaurants. So it was a nice substitute for that since we were kind of on the move. And then Carly had, I think, a squirt bottle <laughs> to get that exact pour. But uh, just having all the, prep, the materials prepped. And then we have this white replica board to bounce some of that light like we talked about. And then if you wanted to do more uniform shots, I would suggest using a tripod or just having a very steady hand so you can get that exact shot over and over again. For this one, we kind of did it overhead so the table was a little bit lower and Carly helped with that. 
And then if you wanted to bounce light, you could use a reflector. They are actually pretty cheap on Amazon, but like Abby said, if you want to go to Walgreens and get a 58 cent uh, piece of poster board, you can just manipulate the light and bounce off so that way there's you know more or less shadow depending on the image that you'd like. One last thing into, I think um, this, the point of this photo was to highlight our spicy mayo, which is orange. So I picked a lot of colors that I thought complemented that, but especially greens, so that the orange color would really pop, because that's what I wanted people to notice in the photo. And then we also wanted to highlight Fusion's new boxes that they had. So we made sure to capture some of these in the um, images that we got yesterday as well. So for these ones, we actually wanted more of the shadow to have um, a sort of moodier look. So when we shot it, we had it at an angle and we didn't use the reflector or anything like that so we could get the full shadows until like a truck drove by on Brown Street and we had to wait a second. But um, we've got plenty of Fusion spicy mayo dunking and captured a lot and just I think we were there for like 15, 15 minutes. minutes so you can really knock out a lot if you are prepared and have a shot list and everything laid out there's yeah. anything and else just having the blank, uh, just having the blank background was helpful too because I could just you know take something away put something else up and Taylor could shoot that while I was grabbing the next thing um, and also I, we have a couple great shots that we got with just the white background and just the black background just based on just having the same setup, but changing the angle. Uh, were we shooting um, forward to back or top down kind of on those? So we got a lot of great content and we actually posted some of it today. <laughs> you had a question over there. Yes. No. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we thought that goal a couple of times. Yeah, and at the end, um, some so sometimes you unfortunately do waste some of the stuff, but um, we, we try not to, or we usually have a person ha happy and willing to <laughs> eat the leftovers, especially if they liked spicy mayo in this case, because I think at the end of it, Carly had used the sauce bottle, but then also wanted some of the pouring. So it was a roll of sushi, just like flooded with spicy mayo, basically. So, I mean, if you don't want to waste products, obviously be very careful when you're taking these action shots, um, but be willing to be a little bit more flexible sometimes too. Yeah. I know not everyone here is here for food photography, but when it comes to food specifically, my rule is you can always add more sauce, but you can't take it away. So if you want to start slow and build up, that's always a best practice. Yeah. Then you guys want to hop on for your demo? Yeah, so we'll have Brandy um, shake up this cocktail here. So um, I think what we're more so demonstrating, Taylor and Carly did a great job, and you know, again, we're... We're not really going to shoot a ton in here because it's not necessarily our normal lighting. Um, I will say, you know, bringing the speed light or the flash was on purpose because that's probably what I would do in this situation. Um, having this white thing would be even great. I'd probably bounce it off of there. Uh, maybe bring a reflector too if I wanted to really light everything evenly. Um, but what you can see here is so again, I really like to look at what my clients are using in their space when I'm shooting. Um, even if I'm not shooting there, you know, I might take things home or we might do it on location, but I want it to blend. I want it to feel like the experience and the ambiance that customers get when they're inside. So um, Solar's owner is actually great at having things. These are all actually from Solar. So I just get to go back in her prop closet and pick things out. It's very fun. But, you know, generally, Trying to find some sort of layering. Um, normally, I would maybe put flowers in here or something, you know, again, that you would find in the restaurant. And, you know, they're really known for their, you know, kind of slate granite looking bar tops. And they have a lot of different things like this and creating layers and textures to just add depth to your photo. Um, in this situation, too, you know, I might come top down and shoot these empanadas just on their own. You know, I might come from a side angle and I've got all this nice wood and then I'd have some detail in the back. Uh, but then if you wanted to do one, you know, once she's pouring this cocktail of them together, you have this whole nice scene. So something I always kind of try to plan for and Brandy and I together is that we come in at a time that you know, there aren't going to be a lot of customers. Maybe it's, you know, in between a shift change like she mentioned or at the beginning of service, um, you know, right around happy hour, right before they open. So we can kind of set something like this up. But then if we need to move it to another place 
we can. It just gives you options, it gives you variety, but it keeps it feeling you know, really on brand for your business. <laughs> Just make a cocktail. Yeah, go for it. Um, no, and I'm a little, I mean, I guess I just want to come back. Yeah. Um, Abby's really awesome about, you know, I mean, like she said, she'll come in before service or like right when we open when there's not a ton of people there, um, but maybe just like a few bar guests when we open for happy hour. Um, but she's also really great about getting those like action shots. Like she said, you know, adding some life to the photos and, a lot of our staff are very into being in, in, the, in the photos, and some are not so much, and she knows the angles to get them at. Um, but yeah, so she comes in. She comes in at a perfect time where it's not too busy, but she can still you know, add a lot of that life and those things that she was talking about earlier. Yeah, that's actually a great point, um, and adds to you know, having this set up and the things that maybe aren't a one-time opportunity done for then this moment, right, where she's maybe shaking the cocktail or pouring the cocktail. So I know that these are here and I can have my lighting set up and I can start shooting right now and then keep shooting as she's pouring because especially if, you know, it's not something that you can redo or that you want to waste, you know, we'll make, we'll make cocktails without the liquor because there's less cost if there's nobody around to drink it, but sometimes that doesn't work. Um, so getting that shot right there as it was happening, if that's what I wanted, you know, having everything set up and testing your lighting first is key. Um, yeah, I will say if you uh, can catch me on the day that we're shooting and you want a drink or some snacks, it's a good day to come to Solar. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions before we sit back down? Awesome. It's a long time. I guess I'll jump right back in. Yeah. <laughs> so the next step would be editing. Um, this is a very kind of quick before and after video of me messing around um, with a solar photo you saw earlier. Uh, and I'll let Taylor jump in here. And one of the biggest things I'll say is when it comes to, I think product photography in general, not just food and beverage, starting simple, starting natural is always safest. You might discover as you go or as you do some brand exploration that you want something really intense, you know, really styled, but it's almost like the sauce thing. You know, you can always add flair and add style, but you can't take it back. Um, so do it intentionally. But um, as far as keeping it simple, you know, one of my, my, favorite tips for people is just check your white balance and temperature, you know, make sure that's consistent with your other photos and then look at lifting your shadows a little bit. You can do this on almost any iPhone app or other smartphone app if you're shooting mobile. Um, just kind of test around pulling those different shadows up to kind of give everything a little more light. Um, and I'll let, I'll let Taylor jump in. She's got a lot of good editing tips too. First, just talking about the iPhone editing. Like I said, you don't need to go out and you know purchase a Lightroom subscription or buy a bunch of apps or presets or all of that um, for your photos that you take. You can also just use your phone settings. There's a, oftentimes you know light and exposure things that you can manipulate pretty easily on your phone. And because we're talking about photography specific to social media, you need to make sure that you're cropping in a way that is best or that is high quality for social. So. If you're posting a bunch of landscape photos, stop today. <laughs> so on social I'll media, ditto that, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> on, unless you're doing, you know, like adventure style, big landscapes of these mountains, those are great sometimes. And you know, sometimes you need, if somebody gets a great photo of us up here today and can't put it in a square, let's just keep it landscape in that case. <laughs> but um, no, when you're thinking about social media. Imagine you're holding your screen when you're scrolling. You want your, your photo that you're sharing to take up as much space on someone's scroll as possible because they're scrolling, they're, you're gonna get like the most bang for your buck when people see all of your image and it's really having control of their eyesight at that point. So make sure your photos are taking up a lot of screen space and um, not sharing landscape because that's like the smallest possible that you can share. So square and portrait, those are great options for when you're cropping. Yeah, um, that was a big thing that Taylor and I both, you know, hit on when we were preparing today. And, you know, something to, if you're looking for, you know, 
if you're maybe trying to break that style or really understand why, you know, think about um, even the example of a picture of the four of us. You know, yes, you want us together, um, but if it was just Taylor up here and then, you know, just empty space, I would much rather see a close up shot of Taylor's face and really understand, you know, the personality there and what she's showing off rather than all this extra stuff. And your products, your food, your beverage, you know, your, your bottles of products, they're the exact same. You know, we want to see the detail in it. We want to be sold as to why we should get that. You know, I don't need to see all this other stuff that then minimizes what, what makes it great. So, you know, when in doubt, especially if you're not feeling super confident on photo composition and things like that, you know, go a little tighter in and make sure it fits nicely in a square and we can still see something in focus. You can also change the cropping depending on the platform and reason that you're sharing. So on Facebook, for example, I know there are some landscape photos that like Audrey has taken at Startup Week where there's a carousel of different images it's taking up the same amount of screen space. So it's totally okay to do that in that case. And then also when you are shooting, make sure you do get a couple landscape photos for like cover photos, LinkedIn profile images, um, anything that you might need a wider landscape image for like your website. Just keep in mind what, again, what your photos are going to be used for. That's why it's great to have a game plan. And I'll just toss in one last thing too. I think um, when you're at a photo shoot, if you have someone who can take B-roll or, you know, even some video footage of the same setup, um, that's been really helpful for us. Get because, the reels and the TikToks. Yeah, we, we took a, when we did this quick photo shoot the other night, we also made a TikTok at the same time. And that's kind of um, helpful for us because it's the same setup and the same looking photos and branding on then all social media for us, which is cool. I'm very glad they brought that up. That's something I thought of ahead of time. And another reason that, you know, I wanted to bring Solar today and, and Brandy is, is thinking about the, the trends and just the movement that social media takes specifically. You know, you can shoot for your website and, you know, your brochures and for those things all in one shoot by making a shot list. But, um, you know, doubling up on that, we, we do that almost every time now. You know, if we're going to take shots of this, we might as well try and get some video content. Uh, and another pretty affordable investment you could make, if I would give you one tip, is just um, if you have a smartphone, you know, I know most people do at this point. Not everybody, but, you know, the, the tripods for smartphones you can get on, on Amazon, at Target, or, you know, small local stores usually for under 20 bucks, and they do just fine. And when in doubt, you know, set it up while you're shooting and post it behind the scenes. People love that. So it not only gives you, you know, high quality visual content, but really interesting, you know, live action visual content that people are really loving right now. So I know today we're talking specifically about product photos. However, I do like portraits and branding headshots as well. And sometimes for like the portrait sessions or if you ever do boudoir or anything like that, it is fun to bring like a Polaroid camera and get some like behind the scenes that way too to give your client like a quick walk away with because it feels a little bit more special. Um, so the, some of the main takeaways are plan and prep. We've said that over and over and over and over again. But um, if you haven't heard it yet, plan and prep. <laughs> And then also find your lighting, get some good um, lighting sources, whether you're outside in the studio, manipulating your lighting inside of your house, whatever works for you, and then edit wisely. Like Abby said, you can, you know, not always take away some of the edits that you make. And once it's on the feed, it's there. <laughs> so be careful about that and make sure that, you know, you're just taking your time and editing to a style that is, you know, clean and crisp or just true to your brand. So if you want to work with us, uh, I offer social media management, I do photography for brands, for headshots, and then I also do consulting. Here's a look at some of my gallery. Kathleen's photo, Pink Moon Goods, is actually in the top left. And then you'll see I do um, some branding style, but I also do portraits. Some of these are for somebody else's brand, but then I also have shot for models who are building out a portfolio, private events, things like that. Similarly, um, yeah, social media packages, so full service social media management, as well as uh, we call them DIY sessions, which is really kind of to jumpstart your social media. So if you're looking to get a, a content plan and a strategy in place, we'll do those. Um, and then we'll add on shoots as well to kind of get you rolling. So like I mentioned earlier, um, I have a deep love of the food and beverage industry. It's, it's where I started. Um, also working more with like editorial style shoots. So we have a shot there from um, Square One and I, 
have the opportunity to work together every once in a while, and I love doing that. Um, and then as well as some, you know, kind of lifestyle portraiture and headshots. Um, if you're into that, something that's a little more, again, lifestyle, natural feeling, not as much the traditional business space, we would love to hear from you. And now if anybody has any questions, we're happy to answer them. <laughs> when the sun sets, it's a nice golden. <laughs> or if you prefer mornings when the sun rises. True. <laughs> um, one thing to keep in mind, I will say, is someone who, uh, you know, I took lessons. Um, I studied journalism, so I got some, you know, photo lessons and along the way, but really was self-taught. Uh, be, be wary of golden hour because it very quickly turns to hot photos. So if you're someone who's trying really hard to learn and you go out and you're like, oh, my shards aren't coming out and this is supposed to be the perfect time to shoot, it's okay. You know, at the end of the day, really follow your intuition and, and trust the light and your exposure triangle. Um, but yeah, early morning as well, yeah. if you prefer that. Golden hour is really great for entrepreneurs because uh, like Carly wasn't off, I think she was on her way back from Columbus uh, at like 5 p.m. yesterday, so we really had no choice besides shooting Golden Hour, but it worked out for us. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you talk to me about editing the photos and the iPhone? Mm -hmm. Are you doing like the setting with these locations in your pictures, or mm -hmm. actually going with each photo on your phone and editing? Great question. So you can do a little bit of both. You can uh, tweak some of the exposure and focus on your phone before you even shoot, but then afterwards there are options to just edit the brightness or the sa saturation directly on your phone too. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, um, especially if you're beginning, maybe don't overthink. I know you can lock your exposure on your iPhone and all that good stuff. A lot of that, as long as it's not overexposed, can be messed with later. You know, when you're shooting and you know tap it make sure it's focused that kind of stuff when in doubt and this goes for you know dslr and mirrorless too when in doubt underexpose a little so if something's really bright what what underexposed means is it's going to be a little dark um, overexposed means it's going to be really really bright and once something's really really bright it's gone it's gone forever you can't get it back whereas if it's if it's too too dark you know that you also get in trouble but if it's a little dark those colors are still there and you can lift them up. Um, so I would say if you're, if you're nervous, don't, don't over panic until you know, over, I don't know, perfect, maybe not panic, over perfect until after you've taken the photo. Anyone else? Yeah, so I think something that would help immediately would be getting something to bounce the light off of um, to reflect some of those shadows that you're seeing, but then also maybe shooting in a different environment where you can't, you know, like if I shot glass in my house, <laughs> it was a mess. I see a lot of shadows that I wouldn't want to post on my social media, I think. But if you shoot an environment that has, you know, kind of a more clean slate, like for instance, I have a studio that I shoot in, or oftentimes you can... I don't know how big the materials you're working with as an artist are, but um, if you can bring them to a new location or have something to bounce the light off would be my suggestion. Abby, do you have anything for that? Yeah, I would add on, you know, consider mixing your medias and, and making use of what social media offers. So like gallery posting, you could uh, maybe find a way to shoot them really evenly. Maybe that looks like, yeah, bouncing light or, um, you know, covering something. So getting a whiteboard or something. So you're, you know, blocking out any additional shadow. So it is really straight on. And then, you know, take videos of it that do show all that depth in the shadows because I think, you know, people might be attracted to both. You know, I, I get, you know, when you're selling something, you kind of want to see exactly what it is and, you know, no, no anything artsy or fun, but the beauty of, of a lot of that kind of stuff in art is, is what it looks like in motion. So do a little of both. I also think you could have some fun with it and embrace the shadows and show a little bit of your, your face and your personality into the brand. So oftentimes if you're the artist that is creating it, your audience, probably likes you too. <laughs> so they probably like similar things that you like. So if you like the shadows, don't be too worried about having like a clean slate photo. Uh, just embrace what you're working with already. 
Any other questions? Yes. These are called replica services. She has a website. Honestly, these ones are a little bit pricier for people starting out, but um, there's something I invested in and have proven really handy to me personally. But I know you can get some on Amazon or kind of create your own before you go out and buy materials like I was stating before. I know Abby has something similar. Yeah, um, so yeah, the replica services are great and they come, if you, if you can see the detail here, um, that, that you can link them together. So no matter where you go, you can have you know, a backdrop too. Uh, something I like to do because it, it offers a lot of freedom. Um, I go to Home Depot in Lowe's and I get tile samples. The downside of that is they're heavier, so you need something to prop them up. Um, so because I tend to shoot either at my home or with my clients, there's usually an opportunity to do that, but it's something to consider. But they also tend to be pretty affordable, you know, less than four bucks a piece, and they're the, pretty much the exact same size, and then you can play with different textures, different colors, uh, and especially if, you know, depending on your products or if you change things seasonally. What's great about this brand is uh, they have a lot of food photography clients who purchase these boards, so they're really easy to wipe clean, and even if you drop food on it, it's still edible. <laughs> it's not gonna like poison you. And I think for these specifically, we picked the, the like, kind of slate and bright white just because that fits with our brand, but they make all kinds of different colors and styles as well. Um, and I'll just jump in and give, you know, Margo, um, the owner of Solar, another plug and something I learned from one of my old bosses, but you know, have a prop box, have a prop closet if you have the freedom to have a whole closet dedicated to it. But um, I started saving that kind of stuff and you know, over the years I said, oh, this is dorky, I don't need this. But I always, you know, this photo right here, these pumpkins, um, they're sitting on my counter right now. I use them with a couple other new fresh items to keep everything, again, looking new, but just the other day. Um, and then I'll leave them out in my house, I won't lie to you, as my fall decorations. But, you know, things that you see in the Target dollar section or, you know, at, at different craft stores, um, you know, they'll add up. And if you can even just dedicate, like, a single Tupperware tub to them, you, you've got them on hand, and then it just makes the process so much easier for you. At a... Uh, Shameless plug for my studio. We also have lots of, we have these set out for clients to use if they rent from us and a handful of other props, similar to just like a Tupperware or Tupper box. What do you call it? <laughs> yeah, tote or something. Tub with something. A tub, a tub. That's what I was looking for. Um, for people to just pick and play with uh, while they're in the space. But now that I, I used to have a whole cabinet at my house. My husband's probably glad that we got a space of our small house to Living with content of. creators is <laughs> an experience. <laughs> they come home, we're like, like I said, in all these crazy positions trying to get the natural lighting um, and all that too. So any other questions? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're super glad to be here. Again, I'm Taylor Hudson Sneed with Tailored Social and Saturday Studio. I'm Abby Hoffrichter with Hoffrichter Creative. Um, and keep an eye out, Taylor and I will offer workshops together and individually. So, you know, if you have burning questions that come up later, we might be answering them in the future. And thank Hopefully. you again, Carly and Brittany, for joining yes, us. Thank you both. Thank you.